Um, well, churches hold a load of things, obviously. Um, the things I think of, first of all, church is the bride of Christ, so clearly very important um, in the whole scheme of things. One day I do believe, as Paul says in Ephesians, the bride of Christ will be presented to the Father perfect without spot, wrinkle or blemish. Um, the church is also um, the body of Christ, so I uh, see in that metaphor the reality that we need to be the arms, the legs, the eyes, the ears of Jesus uh, today. The church is the people of God, um, obviously made up of many different shapes, sizes, personalities, styles and all the rest of it. And I think the church is also, uh, for me, sort of very much to the forefront of my kind of thinking, my heart. The church is, is, is I think, the primary agent of God's working today in the world. In that sense, the church is, a, is an agent of the mission of God himself. Um, pretty important, you know, the church is, is crucial, uh, certainly to God, um, clearly loved um, very much in the heart of God. And because it appears that whilst God can reveal himself in a whole variety of ways to people, that invariably he seems to still choose to reveal himself primarily through his people, um, sort of individual human being to individual human being, uh, then the church is, is very precious, not just in terms of being the body of Christ, but in terms of demonstrating and proclaiming the kingdom of God itself. I, 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 love, I love the people, I know that probably sounds like that's supposed to be the right answer, but I genuinely do love, love the people. I think, I think people are fascinating, uh, people are, are, are all unique, very different to one another. The thing I love about when we get them together, as it were, and be the church, is, is when that works and there's a synergy so that actually uh, we are way more than the sum of our parts. Ah, big question. Um, for me, part of the raison d'etre of, of the church is that it is actually, um, if you like, a subset of mission, rather than mission being a subset of the church, rather than the church doing mission when they get around to it. Um, my whole thinking uh, and conviction is that, that we are the embodied mission of God in, in so many ways. So the extent to which the church embodies mission is for me a reflection of the extent to which the church embodies the life of Christ. Um, the extent to which the church embodies mission is the extent to which each and every member of any given church community embodies the life of Christ, follows him in discipleship, engages with people authentically wherever they rub shoulders with them. Um, well, it sounds like the Sunday school answer, isn't it? Um, Jesus. Um, it sounds a bit glib, but I think basically, essentially, that is is what we offer uh, the, ch the, the world today uh, as the Church of Jesus Christ. Um, people like Bill Hybels sort of made the, the local church is the hope of the world kind of popular phrase, but that is only to the extent that Jesus is the hope of the world and we communicate that particular message. My wife Maggie and I, we've just recently moved and joined um, Chew Magna, Little Village Baptist Church. And whilst in the last oh, seven or eight months, uh, we haven't got a list of people who have come to faith in Christ, it, it is very interesting how that very small church community um, is having an impact into the lives of, of many families. So we are in good relationship with many children and their families, many parents and their families, 
uh, and many older people and so one of the local uh, doctors approached me quite recently enthusing about the uh, parent and toddler group that we run out of the church and, and just say, Nigel, do you realise how critical this group is for the 10% of, of mothers who have depression in this area? Do you realise what a welcome and how affirming this group is actually being to them? And I know through conversations with, with um, the small group that sort of run that group, there are a number of those parents who I would just say are are very close to faith in Jesus. Um, so I see that as my sort of current in focus example of the church actually demonstrating the love and the kindness, the generosity of God in, in very simple practical ways, but at the same time seeking to enable people to understand the reality of who actually Jesus is and how he can be very much part of their lives. I would point people to the steps that we use in what we call the discipleship cycle that we use in all kinds of things with individuals, um, with church leadership teams, with church groups through some of the processes that we encourage churches to work with um, as part of Weber. And ultimately that begins first of all with, with listening. Uh, we all need to do that individually but I think churches need to listen for what God is saying to them listen for what God is calling them to be, listen for what God is calling them specifically to do right here, right now, rather than just through the midst of time. And then I, I would encourage churches to, having heard something of what God is saying, ask the question, where does God want us to take what he has said to us? Where does he want us to plant the seed of his word? So they need to look look around them. Very often the answer is staring us right in the eyes or it's right under our nose. It's right in front of us sometimes and we discover time and time again that while we spend all our time listening and looking for what God wants to do with us actually he's already given us the answer right in front of us. And then I think the biggest omission, in a sense the great omission for many churches is actually doing something about those things. I think many churches actually have uh, a pretty shrewd idea of what God might be calling them to do and where he might be calling them to do it, but we find all sorts of reasons for not getting around to them. So that's what I would say in terms of steps. Listen, look, but go and do something, live it out. Mm -hmm.